There's a new me coming out, and I just have to live, and I wanna give. I'm completely positive. I think this time around, I am gonna do it like you never knew it. Oh, I'll make it through. The time has come for me to break out of the shell. I have to shout that I am coming out. Welcome to the show, Never Too Late Ever, where we focus on making your next chapter the very best chapter ever. I am your host, Lorraine Hoving from It's About Time, and I am glad you are here today. This day could change your life. Open your heart, your ears, and listen, and you might find a gem, a treasure that you can apply to your life today. And today we have back with us, Jen Beck. Hi, Jen. How are you today? Hey, Lorraine. It's great to talk to you. I'm good. good. Looking forward to it. So let me tell you a little bit about Jen. She, as a registered nutrition consultant, speaker, author, and founder of Complete Health Revolution, Jen Beck blows the lid off of healthy living myths that keep you stuck on the diet and exercise roller coaster. She turbocharges your transformation with real strategies focused on your bio-individuality that, wor that work for creating permanent, lasting, which is good, weight loss mm -hmm. and energy gain without gimmicks, tricks, or fads. Jen lives in Cincinnati, Cincinnati <laughs> Ohio, mm -hmm. with her young daughter and their lovable dog, Bella, who we heard from last week. So hopefully, I think, <laughs> Bella, I think Bella knows I love dogs, so he was just trying to say hi last week. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so anyways, welcome. So, Thank um, you. Yes, yeah, so last week we were talking in the end about taking baby steps and the importance of, of layering baby steps. And pretty soon when we layer baby steps, we, we can look back and go, wow, I've, I've come a long ways. But if we bite off more than we can chew, we usually end up uh, in a face plant. At least that has been my experience. So uh, did you want to say anything more about baby steps as we continue on? No, I think the biggest thing to remember is just start somewhere. Take mm. that next best step and just layer, layer success. I love it. You got to, you, you have to start somewhere. And if you don't start, you won't get anywhere. And so the importance mm -hmm. of those baby first steps. Um, what do you see as the difference between, say, lifestyle? Because I've lost my weight, I believe, through lifestyle, I've changed just my, my what I eat. Um, when you were talking about how you eat, it's it's almost exactly how I eat, um, and I've mm -hmm. changed it and adapted to it. But what you use the word lifestyle or a life sentence, and I used to feel for years that I was having a life sentence. So what do you mean be, between the difference between a lifestyle and a life sentence? Yeah, I think for me, I, so back when my mom had a relapses and I was looking, um, I was researching, you know, nutrition and, and looking at, you know, how to be able to help her, I saw people reversing diseases that I thought were a life sentence. Like once you got that diagnosis, mm -hmm. that was just kind of your lot in life. And I think mm -hmm. as Americans, we have a tendency to create that life sentence without knowing it. Right? Right. We all know that we need a healthy lifestyle but don't really understand that the alternative is a life sentence of disease and illness and medications and symptom management and feeling like crap for lack of a better word, right? Mm -hmm. Overweight and run down and lethargic and, you know, sickly and stuff like that um, versus a lifestyle. I mean, it's, it's really an, in, and I would, the other difference is that I think that um, a life sentence is more passive. Like we just kind of accept what happens to us. Versus a lifestyle, we're, we're really being proactive. Right. And we're creating that lifestyle intentionally. So right. we're active. We're, we're drinking water. We're, you know, we're eating well. We're being proactive about our health, and we're creating our reality. We're really going after the quality of life that we're looking for and not just concerned about what the numbers look like on the medical lab. Yeah, yeah. The lab reports. I, I love that because sometimes when we are – 
we just let life pass us by and we're passive and we don't believe that it really makes a difference. But what you're saying is that what we put in our body and the quality of food we put in our body and the action we take towards those healthy goals absolutely makes a difference in the quality of your life, correct? Absolutely. Every yeah. every step that we take, every bite that we take, it's either it's either creating disease or creating wellness. Yeah, I love that. It's either, so audience, listen to this. It's either creating, what did you say again? Creating. It's either creating disease, disease or creating wellness. Or wellness. So it's your choice. So when we're passive, mm-hmm. I I believe when we're passive, it's like we almost have the, our head under the carpet. We don't believe um, that uh, it makes a difference. And so we just, you know, sit on the couch and eat our potato chips or what, whatever. But actually, mm-hmm. I think as we get older, at least I've noticed this as we get older, eat, the more importance of quality food is higher as I keep getting older because it will cause disease if I ignore it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, it's, and I know a lot of people, Lorraine, they're like, I don't know how this happened. Like all of yeah. a sudden I woke up one day and I'm overweight or I woke up one day and I have diabetes or high blood pressure or have had a heart attack and it doesn't happen in just one day. Right. It's right. accumulation of right. our lifestyle. Right. And, and we somehow don't want to admit it um, mm-hmm. because we can't actually see the consequence until we hear it from the doctor. And then we go, Oh, right. and, and, and the doctor says you've got high blood pressure. You've got high cholesterol. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I went to a doctor, um, my doctor about a year ago and when he saw how much weight I'd lost, he said, and, and I said to him, you must see people that lose weight like this and it must be encouraging. He says, yeah, I have in my lifetime, but I've also seen people that, that, um, they are only going to lose weight once the, once they have their first stroke. Once they have their heart attack, once their cholesterol is high, then they have a wake up call. And he says, and even sometimes when they have a wake up call, they don't still don't wake up. So it's almost like we have to believe that nutrition makes a difference, even when we can't necessarily see it. But let me tell you what, I believe that it uh, changes my energy level. So what do you have to say about energy level, Jen, when we're eating well, hydrating good, um, all, all of that? Because our energy changes, I know it. Oh, it's night and day difference, Lorraine. I, I still remember, I feel better at 46 than I did at 26. Yeah. Because of the way that I feel my body now. So when I was 26, I was waking up and having a half a pot of coffee and either a piece of toast, a donut, or a bowl of cereal. Um, lunch was typically, you know, fast food, burger, sandwich, and fries in the Diet Coke or Diet Mountain Dew. And then, you know, the afternoon, there'd be another Diet Mountain Dew. And then dinner was usually like, I don't know, lean cuisines or spaghetti. You know, I, I couldn't cook. I had no idea how to cook um, when I was in my 20s. And, but I needed sugar and caffeine throughout the day. Like Snickers, right. Skittles, and Twizzlers were snacks of choice. Well, you were right? probably and addicted to it. Yeah, you were addicted oh, yeah. to get through the day. Yep, yep. And and so I was I was I was making it through the day, right? But I was constantly feeling drained. I never woke up in the morning going, "Woohoo, let's get out of bed." It was like, "Oh god, I got to get up." Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, so but I still remember one of the first changes I made was starting to drink water before I had my coffee. And it was crazy because in a matter of a couple of weeks, I didn't need the coffee anymore. Wow. Yeah. It, it was amazing, right? And then I added in a green smoothie. And then I didn't need caffeine throughout the day because I had more nutrition in my body. And then I added in a multivitamin. And then I added in, you know, a, a good breakfast, like, you know, pro, uh, like eggs or something like that versus carbs. And so every change I, change I made, I had more and more energy. I felt better and better. I didn't wake up feeling, you know, hungover or muscle pain. I mean, I was in my 20s. I shouldn't have felt any of that stuff anyhow. Right, um, right. You know, and so today, I mean, today I eat organic and I, you know, drink water and I have half my body weight in ounces of water. And, you know, if I have a cup cup of coffee, it's a rarity and it's usually decaf because it's not for the caffeine because I enjoy the taste. 
Right, right. Right. So, you know, it's a totally different mindset and different lifestyle. But I, I, I have had hundreds of clients, hundreds and hundreds of clients that have done the same thing where they start fueling their body and fueling it in a way that, that resonates with their metabolic design, what their body needs. And it's amazing how much energy they have and mental clarity and mood enhancement. I mean, you name it, how right. amazing we feel when we give our body what it needs. Right, right. It's almost like our body craves it. And when you start giving it, it craves it almost more. Uh, yeah. Now, what is one of your favorite, when you're working with your clients, what is one of your favorite stories or results that you that you re- remember that, that just makes you so happy for that person? Mm, uh, there's so many, but one of, one of the ones that, that's near and dear to my heart is a gal that I worked with um, about a year and a half ago. Um, she was in her mid-50s, and she had all kinds of health issues. I mean, rheumatoid arthritis and gout and allergies and asthma and uh, 45, 50 pounds that she wanted to lose. And she had been a, a lifetime member of Weight Watchers. Um, mm-hmm. She had done Weight Watchers one to three times a year, every year for 30 years. She had been on blood, blood pressure medications for 30 years. I mean, you name it. She had all kinds of health issues. And she had just gotten done with the, the hospital diet program, you know, where you do like three shakes a day and then yeah. a sensible uh-huh. meal. She lost four pounds over the course of a year. And the hospital told her, great job. Keep going. You're doing awesome. What? That's like a quarter pound a month <laughs> that she lost for the entire year. Cool. And so she, she went through my Immersion Magic program, which is a three-month program, and she put her rheumatoid arthritis completely in remission. Her gout was gone. Allergies and asthma were literally non-existent. She got off two blood pressure medications the first wow. month that we worked together and dropped 25 pounds. Oh, and said amazing. it was one of the easiest things she's ever done. Yeah. So because, you named the program. What was the name of the program? And, and tell us yeah, a little bit Immersion about it. Immersion Magic. Immersion magic. Immersion magic, because I truly believe that learning how to eat well for your body is kind of like learning a second language, where you can either pick up a Spanish-English dictionary and teach yourself, or you can go live in the country with a guide that teaches you everything. Mm -hmm. And so that's that immersion piece of it. Wow. Okay. And so if somebody was to implement, where would they start on that kind of a program? So for me, whenever I work with anybody, we do a health breakthrough session, which is really where we're looking at where you're at now and where do you want to go? What have you already tried? And then you know, what's the action plan that you can take that's going to get you the results fastest? So we really create an action plan based out of that session, and then we go forward from there. Because I believe that if, if, we're, if I just hand you a plan mm-hmm. and say, go here, go do this, and you don't understand why you're doing it, and you don't understand how to do it, then you're, you're set up for failure. Right, and, right. You know, I, and I believe in having successes and, and helping people to create a lifestyle versus just, you know, going, on, going based on the plan. Because you know what happens when the holiday comes or when you go on vacation, when, when you have a plan, right? Right, right. You go off the plan. <laughs> right, right. And when the, the holiday the window. Comes, when the holiday comes around this time of the year, then it's like Thanksgiving, then Christmas, then New Year's, right. and it keeps going. Uh, and so you you it just multiplies and you don't start. So if somebody was to start, where would the what what would be the first most important um, piece that you would think uh, is it? take out coffee? Um, what, what do you think is one of the most important pieces? It, like you said, take baby steps. What would be one, the yeah. first baby step that you would suggest? The first thing I would do with, with just about everyone is water. Because, because for, for two reasons. One, water is essential for just about every function in our body, right? Brain health, joint health, digestion, detoxification, moving nutrients in and out of the cells, circulation, blood pressure, you name it, water is a part of it, right? Mm. And 70% of the population is chronically dehydrated, like stuck in the desert without knowing it, dehydrated. And 2% dehydration impacts our brain clarity, our mental clarity, 2%. So water is by far the most important piece. 
And so it's, it's the hydration piece, but it's also that we're adding something in 